Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss 001 video, and welcome back to uh, Mythbusters 001. Yeah, but today we're actually also in the flight simulator, making this video a little bit of a flight simulator fun with Swiss 001 video as well, but whatever. Yeah, today let's actually talk about aviation myths again, because it's uh, such an interesting topic, and uh, actually for this one, we'll just, you know, go through the interesting websites out there that name uh, some of those myths, and let me just talk about them. I am a little bit like of a pilot. Um, I can answer and talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, the first one of <laughs> the aviation myth, pretty much one of the biggest ones, one of the recent ones, is um, pilots only take off and land the aircraft and autopilot does the whole rest of the flying. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I, mean, I, could, I could already say that. I mean, really, especially in planes like this one and the A320, like, you know, in, in general, Airbus planes, for example, pilots are not really, you know, plane maneuver people anymore. Yes, that's what they used to be called. No, but actually, these days, they are actually kind of like um, computer managers. You know, we have we, we have this in-flight system, which on the Airbus is called MCDU. And well, yeah, indeed, after taking off, the autopilot will take over the whole flight, basically. We all only have to do the um, start here. In fact, I think pilots are, depending on the plane, actually obligated to use autopilot anyway, so they have to turn it on, right? Yes, they can fly off by hand, but you know, after that, the autopilot takes over. All right, maybe this, maybe this is a little low to the ground to turn the autopilot on, but here we go, for example. But it's not like we can just lay back like we could on a Tesla car that also has autopilot. Uh, no. We still have to set everything, basically, or, uh, basically the autopilot can follow a flight plan that we've entered in the, into the MCDU, of course. It's not like really a Tesla plane where you just you know, go. It's more like a conventional cruise control. You still, you know, can set the speed or it will have, you have to set the speed, for example. But you also have heading, of course, and altitude and vertical speed and everything. But it, it is true. The autopilot, after all, is uh, flying the plane, of course, in a bigger plane like this. In a small general aviation plane like a Cessna, you'll mostly hand fly it unless you want to turn on the computer. You know, I fly planes privately and there I can just simply choose where, whether I want to fly autopilot or not. Now, another interesting thing is uh, your phone's going to crash the plane which is uh, not true at all. I mean, <laughs> see the whole thing about airplane mode? My personal opinion is I don't even turn it on <laughs> most of the times. <laughs> oh when I'm, I'm flying my own plane, that's all I'm gonna say. But you know, when you're in a passenger plane, you should uh, have it turned on. Yeah, you know, the whole airplane mode thing is uh, quite an interesting mystery. Everyone tells you to turn airplane mode on when you're flying an airplane. Most people actually don't do it anymore because it's actually not super important for the flying itself. I mean, you know, I've flown with my phone turned on, even with connected to the internet, you know. I've never had any issues in, in my personal experience, even though I do like to have it always turned on when I'm flying because uh, that saves battery. Uh, uh, this is just a theory, by the way. This is uh, not a fact, but I feel like when I'm flying without the airplane mode turned on, then the phone battery drains very quickly. Because, you know, when you're up there, your phone always searches for a connection. It keeps searching, 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 and that really, really drains the battery. Uh, maybe that's actually true, but that's something my flight instructor told me, so I'm just sticking for it. Uh, yeah, so I always have it turned off. Yeah, welcome back to Mystery 001. We're staying very, um, factical here. Is that even a word? Now, another myth that I have ended myself is that the A320 doesn't need a long runway, which we found out in, like, a thousand other videos on my channel because you know that's basically what this channel is about no I've, I've really started to like the a320 it's uh you know it's actually a little bit of a simpler plane compared to airliners like boeing's and that was a short runway alert that we just got uh which actually is a lot cooler than i thought you know just pressing the a single button basically with airbus the rule is just turn everything on that says off and you're good to go just press any buttons and the plane will somewhat start up I, i've always managed to get the a320 actually started up which i'm very proud of of course uh, but let's get this plane landed while we're at it Okay, we might have landed actually before the runway started, but that's a whole other story. Now let's go ahead and stop it. Which, as we'll find out, is actually no problem. There we go, we have actually landed, but let's not talk about that uh, touchdown zone here. It's, uh, we, we're just gonna ignore it, right? Landing on grass. I mean, that's something A320 can apparently do. I don't know. All right, all right what else do we got? If someone on the plane is sick, it will get sick too because they breathe the same air during the flight. Why is he holding a glass of pee? Uh, and by the way, I don't 
think this one is true. So we can just skip this one. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an airliner pilot, right? It's easier to get drunk on a plane. Um, no. You'll actually not get drunk faster when you're on altitude with a plane. Uh, otherwise, people in the mountains will be just... The sentence is so dumb, you should probably uh, end it in your head, right? All right, how was this myth list? It was all right. Now, another big aviation myth is that the doors actually won't open mid-flight when you try to open them. And uh, no, they won't. We can just simply test this out here in A320. Let's just imagine we want to jump out of the plane for some reason. Uh, we can just, you know, go into the cabin here. There we go. And let's try to jump out, which obviously doesn't work. Uh, we cannot even touch this here. And obviously, that's because, you know, there's so much air flowing out the door that the air just locks the door inside of the plane, right? So we cannot open it. Like, genuinely, it's like almost like impossible to open it in, with any strength. So, uh, you will have to get somewhat of a slower plane, for example, like, you know, some triple prop planes, like skydiving planes that are actually able to open doors mid-flight. What is this here now? Pilots don't have parachutes? No one has ever said that pilots have parachutes, dude. <laughs> Who comes to that idea? Like, why would only the pilots have parachutes? Would they be like, oh, sorry, we just had a bird strike. Time to head out. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Like, <laughs> how would that even go? Jesus Christ. I, as I've already said, you cannot just jump out of your plane, right? And, uh, well, you know, if you're not... Ex an experienced parajump or anything, like a parachute person, you're just gonna die. Because the parachuting or whatever it's called again is actually pretty not easy. <laughs> so no, everyone's definitely going down if the plane is going down. That's all that we've got to say and I hope that comforts you in a way. What, is he, what are these sights even saying? Jesus Christ, no one even thought that. There isn't only one pilot. And they actually show a cockpit of, uh, what is that again? Is that not a Twin Otter plane? Yeah, that is probably a Twin Otter plane. Very nice one. And what is the myth here? Oh, okay, that only the captain of a plane is a certified pilot, which is obviously the stupidest thought ever, right? I mean, how would the co-pilot, the first officer, not be a certified pilot? But actually, this is uh, quite an interesting myth that also is spread around, like, here, in Germany especially. Uh, a lot of people believe that the co-pilot as there is, it's always referred to. Like, isn't able to fly the plane properly. Like, it's only the captain that can fly or something, which is obviously not true. Like, as you can see, this has a perfectly usable joystick as well. We can simply get this plane down to the ground, which is not actually easy in, a, in an Airbus plane because of the fly-by-wire. Like, genuinely, it is pretty hard to get this plane, like, skydive down. Yeah, that's a whole other story for sure. <clears throat> what is this myth now? The autopilot doesn't actually fly the plane. The autopilot is essentially a very advanced form of GPS, providing input and support regarding direction and position. But there's always a human in control of the plane. I mean, no. Now, there, I know, I know a lot of planes that only have, like, an altitude mode so that really holds your plane at an altitude of, like, I don't know, where you set it, like, I don't know, 4,000 feet or something. And those planes don't have GPS sometimes, even. Um, so this is, I think, wrong. <laughs> yeah, what? And no, when the autopilot is in control, it's the autopilot that has has the actual control of the plane. Of course, the autopilot is just following what the pilot says, but like, that is really a stupid list. I don't know. Pilots don't actually avoid the Bermuda Triangle. I'm pretty sure this photo is not even from the Bermuda Triangle. Like, you would only find these buildings here. At, yeah. I mean, a really long time ago, I did fly to the Bermuda Triangle with uh, some planes and, oh, well, guess what? Nothing happened. What the hell? Lightning storms will not take down your plane. And wow, what a great lightning storm that is, right? Uh, no, of course, lightnings won't actually do anything to your plane. That's like the stupidest thing to believe as well. Uh, even though there are a lot of people that believe it. Uh, but no, I'm just going to mention the word um, statical discharger here, which every plane has. At least mine does. That's all I care about. Actually, the Airbus has these as well. I think these are static statical dischargers or static dischargers. Yeah, that's uh, what they are here, these things. These are basically just for the lightning bolts too when they hit, right? No, no problem at all. Small planes aren't more dangerous. No, they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying this as someone who flies small private planes. Well, okay, okay, they're talking about the planes themselves. I'm talking about the flying of the planes, right? It's really about the pilot who's flying it, because obviously a pirate pilot is uh, less experienced and less certified. Well, it is a, a, a worse certification for sure than an actual commercial pilot, so that is already debunked. Actually, flying small planes is a lot more dangerous, of course. You don't have to be rich to fly small. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I mean, this can be a thing in the US, um, where you can, like, get dead like, lights of, like, private jets, but that's a whole other story. I believe this is actually just a very much sponsored article. <laughs> it's, just, it's always just you having ads everywhere. Same with the linear air taxi. I don't know. All right, Austrian Airlines also posted this uh, article here, but obviously that's going to be boring because it's going to be at least factually right. You know, we need to embarrass some people. Um, okay, interesting engineering. Actually, quite a nice site. Myth, the oxygen masks don't actually provide oxygen. Who, who believes that? I mean, it's literally called oxygen masks. 
These little guys obviously don't provide a limitless amount of oxygen, only like for 12 minutes, but that's, you know, a very easy time frame to get your plane down to breathable altitude as a pilot, so I don't really get it. Myth, an airplane window can shatter and you can be sucked out of the plane. Well, it's not even made of glass, is it? <laughs> no, but that obviously rarely happens, unless like, well, they actually named the Southwest Airlines flight um, example here, where, you know, the jet engine blew up and actually uh, damaged the actual window, and yes, there was a person sucked out of the plane, very much unfortunately. And that was actually a very sad day for aviation, but it does very rarely happen. Seven most annoying myths about flying. All right, what are some annoying myths? Flying is expensive. Have you ever heard about Ryanair? Flying has become more dangerous. Have you ever heard about Ryanair? Modern commercial jets are so sophisticated that they essentially fly themselves. Yeah, that's true. Pilots cut back airflow to save fuel and tinker with oxygen levels to keep passengers to sell. Cut back airflow. Oh, are so they reducing the amount of oxygen so people get dizzy? There is no airflow in planes. Like, I, I don't really get this one. Maybe I'm just too stupid. Well, probably I'm just too stupid to be quite honest. Call pilots aren't real pilots. They're just apprentices. No, you have to be a genius to fly. No, look at me. You have to be wealthy to fly. Yes, look at me. You have to be super fit to fly. No, look at me. No, you just have to be uh, properly rich and, and uh, have something in your brain to fly. That's all we have to do, really. There's no seat row number 13 on board a plane. Let's find out, actually. I do wonder, actually. I, I don't really I don't really remember. I, I think, actually, there isn't a number 13, because, obviously, 13 is, like, a unlucky number or something. I mean, that's what we have the flight simulator for. Are there any, any seat numbers here? Any? <laughs> yeah. Wait. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, and indeed, though, <laughs> number 13 is actually mostly left out of the cabins, just to know. The black box is black. No, it's not. It's, it's actually orange, isn't it? Yeah, it's orange. <laughs> Yeah. All international pilots speak English. Yes. I mean, even though if you were like, flying nationally, for example, like, uh, you know, if you're flying just in Germany as a German, for example, you can actually speak German on frequency, which I do. Yeah. Planes the safest transportation. Fact. I mean, after all, all, the, all these websters are saying the same. Flying is okay. Just do it. Don't be scared of it. Like, what the hell? All right. So, <laughs> yeah, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to all my members, especially the A380 members, Government Pizza, Riley Preston, Thomas Roach, Finian M, Larry Das Lama, No You, Philip Schneider, Leo, Mark Helbling, Great Grandpa John, Toby Cook, very much appreciated, uh, British 001, Deload, YT, Moritz Wellhausen, Jackson Hawker, uh, Joan Matute, Darcy Hunkin, and 